So what is an electrocardiogram? Electrocardiogram, also known as EKGs, has some basic features, which I'm just going to talk about on the board here before we move on to the cardiac electrophysiologic system. Have you ever seen a paper of EKGs? It actually has a couple boxes. This is just a rough sample paper that I drew on the board. There are small boxes on the EKGs and each box is actually one millimeter square. Then you can count one, two, three, four, five. There's five small boxes which forms a thick box. And those boxes are five millimeters square because it's five little squares. See that? One, two, three, four, five. Each millimeter is actually 0 0.04 seconds on the EKG or 40 milliseconds if you multiply that by a thousand. So when I say it's, I have five millimeters squared, well that would be times 40, it would be 200 milliseconds or 0.02 seconds on the EKG. This is just a standard introduction to kind of introduce you to what are some of the basics you need to know when you take a look at an electrocardiogram. But what I really want to focus on in this lecture is, is the cardiac electrophysiological system. Cardiac electrophysiology. So, let's begin. When you look at a cardiac electrogram, you see a bunch of lines. You see something going up, some people going down, and those are the things I'm going to try to decipher in this lecture. The first thing you see on an electrocardiogram is a line that looks like a bump that goes up like that. That is known as a P wave. The first upstroke line curve that you see on an EKG is known as the P wave. Well, what is the P wave? That's right on the board here. The P wave is actually represents atrial depolarization. Atrial depolarization which means when the atrium depolarizes, what we see on a two-dimensional piece of paper is this upstroke potential. You just look at the little bump. It's positive. And then we move forward on the EKG, and we see this line that draws, goes straight forward and makes a little dip. Now, when the atrium depolarizes, we also get atrial repolarization, but we often don't see atrial repolarization on the EKG. It's often buried somewhere, which I'm going to talk about in a minute. Well, you're going to see another line that dips up and comes up like this and then comes down. That is a Q R. S, Q, R, S. So the first negative deflection on an EKG after a P wave is known as a Q wave. That is the first negative deflection. Right after a Q wave is a R wave. The R wave is this line right here. Just this line. That's just your R wave. The R wave is the first upward or positive deflection on the Q wave. So we have something known as the QRS complex. Well, what is the QRS complex? The QRS complex is ventricular depolarization. So when the ventricle depolarizes, right, influx of sodium ions into the cells, what you see on an EKG is this QRS complex. 
So where is the atrial depolarize, repolarization? It's often buried inside this QRS complex, so we never see atrial repolarization on an EKG. Then, I'm gonna keep talking before we come back later. So this is an S wave. See this upward slope here. This is an S wave. QRS complex. And after that, we have a T wave. A T wave. What is a T wave? Well, a T wave represents ventricular repolarization. So as you can see, we see atrial depolarization, ventricular depolarization, ventricular repolarization, but we never see atrial repolarization on an EKG. Very important that you remember that. So we've talked about all the waves, different little waves, right? Now let's talk about intervals. The first interval that you're going to see on EKG is a PR interval. PR interval. And the PR interval is the interval from the beginning, from the beginning of the P wave to the beginning of the Q wave. So where's the beginning of our P wave? Right here. That's the beginning of our P wave. Where is the beginning of our Q wave? Right there. So this, the interval, right, between the beginning of the P wave and the beginning of the Q wave is known as the PR interval. The PR interval. Well, the PR interval is often, it varies a lot. The PR interval is actually happening at the level of the AV node. At the level of the AV node. And basically, this is actually affected whether we have an increase in heart rate or decrease in heart rate. If I have a decrease in heart rate, it's going to take longer. So what happens is this SA node depolarizes, right? And then the atrium depolarizes, I see the P wave. But what happens to that depolarization potential has to reach the AV node. It takes some time. That time is the interval for the action potentials to reach the AV node. Once it reaches the AV node, it has to go down the Purkinje fibers, right? Let's go to the bundle of heads, the left and the right bundle. But that takes some time. Once I reach here, I depolarize the ventricle. And that's how I see the QRS complex. So the interval is the time it takes between the action potential to reach from the SA node to the AV node is what gives me my PR interval. So let's think about it clinically. If the SA node is slow, let's say I have increased vagal tone, like the vagus nerve, right? The parasympathetic is affecting the SA node and it's slowing down the SA node. And it's taking forever for the AV node to get get the message, what would happen to my PR interval? It's going to be prolonged. The prolonged is going to lengthen and lengthen and lengthen, right? So that's what you have to notice in PR interval. And let's say I have a sympathetic discharge from norepinephrine affecting the SA node. What happens to my SA node? It fires really, really fast, and that's going to shorten my PR interval because my atrium is going to depolarize, and immediately it's going to get to the ventricle. When it rushes down, the ventricle is going to depolarize, and the cycle continues. Now, there's another interval known as the QT interval. The QT interval, which is the beginning of the Q to the end of the T wave. The beginning of the Q to the end of the T wave. That is known as the QT interval. Well, the QT interval represents the entire period of depolarization and repolarization of the ventricles. That's the entire depolarization plus repolarization of the ventricles. As you can see here on the board, see, that's the ventricles. It depolarizes and then repolarizes. Depolarizes and repolarizes. Now, 
There's a segment also on this cardiac electro, uh, electrophysiology graph that I've drawn on the board known as the ST segment. Well, the ST segment is the segment between the end of the S wave to the beginning of the T wave. The end of the S wave. This is the end of the S wave to the beginning of the T wave right there. That's the ST segment. And that is a very important segment when we're looking for a myocardial infarction when we say a patient has an ST elevation. ST elevation. And in that case, what you actually see, and this is actually just jumping the gun, but just to kind of show you, see that? That is the ST elevation because this ST segment is elevated and that is a sign of cardiac infarction, especially having two or three contiguous lead on the EKG. I know I'm jumping the gun, but I'm just trying to give you a broader perspective from physiology eventually to clinical medicine, to clinical medicine. Well, once we commit this to memory, it's important that I show you how this actually correlates to the depolarization potential on the ventricle.